Good morning, guys. I, uh, I wanted to, there's so much I want to say right now, but I'm trying to, like, align my thoughts so that they make sense and so that what I say is effective and because it's important, it's really important to understand what's going on here. You know, I had never dreamt that this whole trans thing would get the way that it has gotten back in the day when I tr transitioned in 2003 and started advocating and, and wanting to educate people because there was hardly no one out there to in attempts to make some sense out of this whole thing. But in reality, it was the worst thing I ever did. You know, I, I should have kept my mouth shut. I should have never promoted, you know, Jazz Jennings. I should have never done what I did because it has it has exploded into a point where it's it's not good. It's no longer, you know, people trying to coexist. It's uh, the the trans community trying to take over people's thoughts, trying to obliterate anybody's experience or anybody's beliefs and views and ideas. They don't know how to play with others in a sandbox. Now, I know that not everyone in the trans community is this way. There's a lot of really normal, you know, people out there that believe they suffer from gender dysphoria. And I say believe because I, I truly don't think that it is an actual true diagnosis. It's a diagnosis that's been put out there to explain people's pains, suffering, inability to deal with life the way life has been dealt to them. And for that, you know, I, I am very empathetic of that because when I found out about this, it kind of like all clicked into my head and it was like, yeah, this is, this is what's wrong with me. But it's deeper than that. It's deeper than just not liking who you were born as, not liking certain body parts. It's it's all based on trauma. It's all based on poor relationships with siblings and, and mother-father wounds. And it, it, it's it's really complicated. And, and today we're going to be having a um, psychotherapist um, from all the way across the pond from England. And it's going to be a really interesting interview um, because we're going to get really deep into a lot of these issues. But in saying that, you know, I, I see a lot of trans individuals that, you know, want to live a life um, in pure denial of who they are. I mean, it's okay to express and, and dress and, 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 Try to alleviate yourself the best you can, but when you want to alter reality, then you're bringing other people in and then you're like skewing their reality and placing your needs in front of everybody else's needs. And that's, that's wrong. That's not, that, that's narcissistic. That's a slew of different class, cluster B disorders that these gender specialists are ignoring and it's harmful to people around you and to yourself. It's important to understand who you are. It's important for you to make peace and heal. Then if you still want to express the way that you do, that's, that's fine. That's you. But when you have a group of people that just want to control the narrative and want to control social media, and try to get people off social media because they don't agree with what you're saying, that's pathological. And that's not okay because since the beginning of time, people have had different views and in their different views, they've been able to have healthy debates about this. They may not always agree. That's why the term agree to disagree comes in. But the other is pathological. You don't get to promote your narrative and destroy other people's narrative. And I say to all these platforms, shame on you because you are placing a particular group over another group. Includes women, that includes children, that includes people that 
have a religious upbringing and, and do not feel comfortable around these things. So we all have the, the right to express the way we feel and speak from our hearts. Now, I'm, I see a group, I see several individuals in this group that, you know, found a way of, to have kids and I made a comment yesterday on my Facebook that I think these kids are in danger. I think these kids are being like exposed to something that later on in life is going to affect their mental health. You can imagine a biological female who transitioned to be to express as a male and in, in their reality they are a male and they consider themselves a dad. When this child realizes that their so-called father is actually a biological female, do you imagine the kind of harm that's going to create to this child? Do you imagine the the fun this child is going to be made of by his peers when they find out? And certain individuals are all over social media, so it's not a hidden factor. So this, you can't like protect this kid from this fact as the kid gets older. I made a comment like that, and it was considered hateful. Comment is not hateful when it holds truth that a certain group of individuals don't like the truth because it hurts them. You know, we all get hurt. We all find things in life that hurts us deeply, but we can't just remove this hurt like that. Even physical pain, many times we can't get rid of it no matter how much we try to mask it with, with pain medication or even surgeries or whatever. Sometimes the pain never goes away. It's something you deal with, something you live with. It's part of being an adult. Adults deal with pain. Children run away from pain. And if you haven't fully actualized yourself because you're stuck in certain childhood stages, then you're going to get a an adult that behaves as a child. And we see a lot of that, not just in the trans community or in the LGB community. There's a lot of that throughout the world. So my point is, we need to learn to listen to one another. We need to try to learn from one another. Ask questions. You may not agree with what I'm saying. Well, ask me, why do I think this? And I will very, very easily explain to you why I feel the way that I do. Look, I've walked this life since 2003. I've had all sorts of confusion growing up thinking, you know, of one point that I wanted to demonstrate myself as female. Another time I would, you know, was more masculinized all due to medication that was given to my mother to prevent miscarriage, progestin induced sterilization. And because of that, I've gone back and forth in life, you know, and it's like thinking something was wrong with me, but it's, I'm okay. It's taken me a long time to understand that I'm okay. I'm okay with who I am. This is me. I sometimes, you know, and, and obviously now after 20 plus years of testosterone, I can't go and express the other way without looking like some sort of, I, I don't want to use the word and offend anybody, but you know, not, not a pretty picture. So I walk through life easier this way than the other. Although I know not an ounce in my body is male. I'm completely a female that has androgenized her body. And I'm okay with that. If you're not okay with that, that's on you. But I'm okay with that. And we should all be allowed to express how we feel. Detransitioners are, are being attacked by the mob because they're speaking out. What does it matter to you that somebody else, you know, thinks a certain way about this? We all have an opinion and that's okay. And we all have a way that we believe and that's okay too. No matter what I do to my body, I will never get back to being that beautiful woman that I once was. I will never get my hair to grow back on my head. I will never have my beautiful soprano sounding voice back. I've had to deal with all those losses and all and all the things that I've been through from molestation to mother father wound all the things and you know what it's my life and I've accepted it and I don't blame anyone it's how it was and I am thankful where I am today that I finally have made peace with who I am 
I still need to work through a lot of the pain and, and stuff that I went through during the molestation years, which was from the ages of eight to 12. You know, a lot of things, you know, being raised in a very violent household because my dad was a, an abusive alcoholic. But, you know, we all have problems. I've seen so many people out there, if, so many, with so many childhood traumas that lead their, you know, to them having some sort of bipolar um, personality disorder, narcissistic personality types, and all sorts of things like that. Today's world with these social media and selfies creates more narcissistic than ever before because people are so focused on themselves. In order for you to heal, you need to take out that focus on yourself and start focusing on other people, loving other people, getting involved in helping other people, doing things that are not just you-centered. So for that person on Facebook that asked me the question, well, when am I going to start, you know, expressing as Maritza again, newsflash, my name is Maritza. And this is how Maritza expresses herself now after 20 plus years of testosterone. The other did not feel normal to me anymore because of the 20 plus years of androgen and what it does to your brain and to your body and to every cell in your body. I can't change this. I can't make all this body hair stop growing or sit there and start fussing over it like I did in my last detransition. I spent an hour and, and then some grooming every morning trying to get rid of all this hair because it grows like weed even without taking anything. I, bet I was off of testosterone for, for like six, seven months and nothing ever stopped growing. And I felt horrible because I have no ovaries. I removed those in 2003 at the same time that I had a mastectomy. 2003 underwent bilateral hysterect a bilateral oophectomy and full radical hysterectomy. Everything got removed as well as my female breasts. So you just can't take this stuff and, and throw it away. Those people that detransition that have only been on hormones for a couple of years and still have their ovaries, yeah, they could get some resemblance of who they were before. Not completely, but someone like me, you can't, I mean, after five plus years and a hysterectomy, you can't regain who you were before. I'm sorry. It just doesn't happen, you know, but... My legal name is Maritza. I haven't changed my name back to Mark Angelo. Okay? And I'm fine with that. Because you know how many times I've gone back and forth? It's like, this is it. This is it. You know, I, I can't change what I've done. And I don't want to say there's full regret because it has taught me a lot. This this challenge journey that I've had has made me who I am today. And I know that somehow, some way, God is going to use this. And yes, I believe in God. I believe that Jesus Christ died on that cross for our sins. And that's my belief. And I'm entitled to that. You may be an atheist. You may not believe in anything. And that's, you're entitled to that. That's you. So you're allowed to voice your opinions you're allowed to say what you want, but you don't want other people to express how they feel and what they think. You need to learn to play with others in the sandbox. And, and those of you that I'm talking about or to, you know who you are. Settle down. If you believe who you are so much, why do you need other people to validate you? Why do you need to silence other voices? What, you're afraid that what, what people like me built is going to get destroyed? No, it's never going to get destroyed. We're just trying to stop the the transitioning of children, the harmful medicalization that's being done on people that doesn't work because we're not God. We can't create something that God creates. We only mess it up further. And for those of you that are truthful with yourself after you've undergone these surgeries, you're never the same. Things that you do to your body that are meant to be done to your body do not function. Just look at all the 
videos of people who've had the surgeries who now regret it because it doesn't function. It's hurt them. It's hurt their health. It's got osteoporosis. They, it just, it doesn't work. And as far as detransitioning, detransitioning looks different for everyone. Some people could fully detransition. I know I should be the expert on detransitioning. I've tried it six times. And I guess I'm still considered a detransitioner because I haven't changed myself legally back to the other way. I only express this way because this is what feels natural to me after 20 plus years of androgen. And I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of the battle. I'm surprised I'm even alive still. Whenever I stop taking testosterone, my heart goes into all sorts of tachycardia and, and flutters. And I tried at one point taking estrogen and it didn't work right on my body. My body rejects it. Maybe because of my progestin induced virilization. I could never even take birth control pills when I was a teen because it, it was like my body rejected it. It made me very ill. So I hope this video answers all your questions and I hope you understand where my heart is at. It's important to have different views. It's important to educate. We can't just ram things down people's throats and expect people to believe what you say or to do what you want just because you want it. That's narcissistic. I'm sharing my views, my beliefs, and that's that. You know, you don't have to agree with me. You don't have to like it. But people should be allowed to express how they feel without being worried. Like Jordan Peterson got suspended from, from Twitter for speaking truth. Do we want to live in a world of untruth just to appease a small minority who is trying to become a majority by grooming a ton of people? That's crazy. Please stop. Please grow up. Please understand that there are different views and opinions and different ways of expressing. People will respect you more that way instead of like trying to take over women's sports, trying to go into women's prisons, trying to do whatever it is that you all are trying to do. Just stop. Live your life. If you say you are who you are, make peace with yourself and live your life. But stop blowing people up the way that you're doing. It's wrong. Please. Just, just allow other people to be. You want to be, but you don't want other people to be. How does that work? All right, guys. I'll catch you guys later in the live feed uh, with our interview today. Love you guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them down below. You know, no, I'm not going to be shaving my beard. I mean, my face when the last six, when I detransitioned last, that was like shaving every day. It kills my face. Even with 20 years of testosterone, my skin is still not as tough as a biological male would be because I am not biologically a man. And I'm okay with that. If I'm okay with that, why should that bother you or anybody else? You know, I've been trying to, to sort out my, my own pain and hurt and, and this is how it looks like. And I'm not asking for pity and I'm not asking for any of that because I'm fine. Truly, I'm fine. Still trying to work through the molestations and stuff like that, which will probably take a lifetime. Because to tell you the truth, I kind of swept it under a rug and many of the other things that I'm still dealing with. But I'm fine. Speaking out is therapeutic for me. Because I know there's somebody out there that needs to hear this. And, and it will help them. Alright guys, love you. But remember to always love yourselves too. Bye-bye.